and welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the CUBE Research. And today I am thrilled to be joined again by Gretchen Tinneren, who's the VP and GM of US Telco Media and Technology for Kindrel. Gretchen, welcome. It's great to see you again. Hi, Shelley. Great to see you again also. Always enjoy our conversations. So, <laughs> and this is going to be a great one. So to set the stage a little bit, you know, we're, we're at a very interesting time today. We've got platform transitions. We've got the emergence of new platforms. We've got the outsized role that data plays from a business competitive advantage standpoint and need to continue business transformation initiatives, cut costs, improve efficiencies, all of these things. And so much is happening across industries across the board. We know one thing for certain. They need help. I know you won't disagree. <laughs> yeah, they do. So, absolutely. So we last spoke in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress. And as as I mentioned, you oversee telco, media, and the technology sectors for Kindrel, which are three very fast growing, very rapidly evolving industries, all for different reasons. So I would love it if you would tell us a little bit more about how you work across these industries and maybe share some insights on the market trends you're seeing across these sectors. Absolutely. Um, you're right. Three really uh, fast growing and evolving evolving industries. Um, and these are our are newer markets across Kindrel, right? And so the reason we really established these distinct, three distinct markets being telecommunications, media entertainment, and technology is because as we look as a systems integrator to solve our clients' business challenges, it's really important for us to understand what those challenges are in those particular verticals, right? Mm -hmm. So um, as, as businesses look to diversify revenue streams and and reduce dependency on any single market segment. They're really aiming to move beyond traditional connectivity and, and traditional platform-based products. And so our intention of being very focused on these three verticals is to bring those industry subject matter, magic matter experts um, to our clients. And we do so through um, our consulting organization, as well as our managed services um, teams, right? And and really aim to provide that advised design, build, and manage across the industries. Again, with with each having their unique, unique um, product sets, unique situations, unique challenges, but developing the use cases that solve those enabled by technology, right? It starts mm -hmm. with the business challenge that, that they're all having. Um, I think Shelly and I kind of reflect on MWC <laughs> and all that we've heard and saw, right, at, at MWC in particular, but yeah. I would say a trend that we're seeing across all of those three verticals is around sustainability. Right. And I think coming off of MWC, we heard certainly um, everything was about data and AI and sustainability <laughs> in the World Congress. And it does align with the trends that, that we're seeing in those three markets. Yeah. yeah. Approaching them differently, right, based on the relevance. Um, but certainly, I would say from a trending perspective, data, AI, and certainly sustainability, top of mind. Okay, so as we saw at Mobile World Congress, there's a huge talk about and focus on sustainability efforts. So I would love to know more about what you're seeing from Kindrel's telco, media and entertainment, and technology customers. And part of my question is really about you know, I, I truly believe that every business of every size is thinking about this, concerned about this, in some ways focused on this, but it's a little, a little bit of a challenge too, I think, because as important as sustainability is for customers, 
there are also other business things that need to happen, right? So it's like, you know, one of the things that I like to think, you know, when you think about your own sustainability efforts just at home, right? I think about, okay, I'm composting and I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you know, but there's sometimes, you know, like sometimes it's like, oh my God, I'm just going to have to go ahead and throw away this plastic container. <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes you have the best intentions and you really want to focus on all things sustainability, but there are other other business things that may get in the way. So I'd love to know yeah. more from you about what you're seeing from Kindle's customers in terms of how much focus they're actually able to devote to accomplishing their sustainability objectives. Yeah, so you really hit the nail on the head there and really what we're seeing also, whereas sustainability is is one of the highest, if not the highest priority for our clients, right? Um, with their CEOs, with the board members. But we're also finding that, um, and, and through our own global sustainability parameter study, found that 85% of organizations, although place a very high strategic level of a, an importance of achieving the sustainability goals, only 16% have actually integrated sustainability into their strategies and data. Yeah. So, right, when I think about that, th that tells me that to, to your point, Shelly, our clients have to continue to manage their current state of business. At the same time, be very future forward thinking of what does that roadmap look like for my current state of business? What does transformation modernization look like? Not, not tomorrow, but even 12, three years, five years down the road. And then how do I put sustainability at the center of that, right? And how do I execute with sustainability as the highest priority through my current state, but also transformations. And that comes whether our clients are, you know, as they look at their, continue to look at what their data center, you know, strategies are and looking at climate control and power consumption. Um, this is where Kindrel really brings the skills of our people, of our tools, to be able to advise on the client on how to integrate sustainability to actually show real results in current state, but then two, three, four years down the road. This is something that should always be at the forefront, but it's going to, it's evolving, Shelly, and it's evolving quickly, right? This is being um, absolutely. And, and customers want ex expect, and as they should, to see those results right, um, from those efforts. Well, I think that, you know, I started really getting immersed in the sustainability space in the last couple of years. And I was on the leading edge of all things digital transformation. I was actually working, you know, as a practitioner, um, you know, alongside customers who wanted to begin their digital transformation journeys in the early days, you know, a decade or so ago. And um, in the last couple of years, I really, I, I, I believe very deeply that as important as digital transformation is and has been and will continue to be to organizations, sustainability is right alongside that in terms of importance. And you're saying that as well. Um, I think that the challenge, though, is that, you know, we talked earlier about some some key customer challenges that everybody's wrestling with, right? Getting arms around data. And, you know, managing this massive influx of data um, with sustainability in mind. And then, and then when you add AI to the equation, um, that, of course, also has its, uh, some massive effects on sustainability. And, and I believe, you know, AI and generative AI and all of the hoopla around that um, is, is driving a lot of conversation around sustainability because you've got power and heating and cooling and data center scarcity and other challenges that are really resource intensive. And so, you know, and, you know, one thing I'll also mention is that I've been involved in some sustainability research that Honeywell does on a quarterly basis. And um, I remember when we were, it, it really is all about sort of measuring where organizations are on their sustainability journeys. And when we first launched this survey about a year ago, most of the survey respondents indicated that they were 
the efforts they were making to meet their sustainability goals were pretty slight. And they were about things like changing your processes and not really adopting technology solutions. And we've seen over time, as we've continued to do this research, that that has changed and shifted a little bit. But I think really that's where a vendor like Kindrel as a partner can help because you can bring the guidance in terms of you know helping develop a strategy and and how to execute and implement and all that sort of thing, but there are also some very very real technology solutions. Like you can't meet your sustainability goals, you cannot meet your sustainability goals by just changing your processes. You just can't. No, and nor can you meet it, Shelley, just by technology implementing more AI into the environment. <laughs> right, right, right. You can certainly implement and take advantage of more AI into the develop into your environment to yeah. help streamline and efficiencies and processes and et cetera. But you still have a whole lot of data sitting out there, right? In the data today. So what are we doing with that data in um in, in a way and, and how can we and how do we and and this is what we do is advise our clients on that data that that then is going to help them um, in the current state and in the future state tie that back to, again, sustainability by using certainly products like generative AI. Right. But to me, that's that's a side benefit, right? You're using generative AI to help you with processes and streamline operations, but you have to you have to look at that data. And again, looking down at the at the data center, looking at the software, looking at the programs, integrating all of that data. How are you consuming it? How are you protecting it? How are you securing it, right? Um, it, it, data is at the core of it. Um, I, AI is a side benefit. Uh, but, and, and that's also, I think, why it's so important, you know, observability plays such an important role. You know, you can't monitor what you can't see. Right. I mean, I think that's a big part of this equation. And um, so I, I feel like it's it's a very interesting time. Um, and, you know, I, I believe that just like with digital transformation, technology alone isn't the answer. Processes alone aren't the answer. The real answer is a combination of people, processes and technology and how we can all work together to identify, strategize, execute, implement measure, monitor, all of those things. And and I think that the other part of the equation, and I'm a big fan of this, you know, I've been talking about this for a long time, but, you know, strategic alliances and partnerships and relationships with trusted vendor partners, that is the path forward. It's not build it yourself. It's not start from ground zero. It's not all of those things. And I think that's really where we see, um, we, we see as analysts in the industries, customers who really, really do very well on the sustainability front. And a lot of it has to do with the relationships that they forge, the alliances that they forge, how they embrace this move towards sustainability. And I think that, you know, really, I, to me, that's where I see Kindrel bringing deep value in terms of expertise. You know, the thing about the thing about working with a trusted vendor partner that you get the as a customer, you get so much advantage because you get a partner who brings all of the experiences that they have had working with other clients, right? So they bring those, you know, they know what the challenges are, they know what the problems are, they know where the hiccups are. So I really see that as an important part of the process in terms of reaching and achieving and getting on the path that you need to be as it relates to sustainability. And I have a feeling you won't argue with that. No, I won't. I mean, it's, Certainly, we have a, a lot of data and experience that we gain from from our existing clients. We also have our own, right? Yeah. We refer to ourselves as customer zero. I was just so, getting re- I was just getting ready to ask you about that. Yeah. And I well, and I think that what's so important here, I'll set the stage for you. What I and we talked a little bit about this at Mobile World Congress, and what I really love about this is that, you know. Kindrel's not just talking the talk, you're walking the walk and, you know, calling yourself customer zero on the sustainability front is a big deal. So talk with us a little bit about how you treat yourself as customer zero. 
Yeah, yeah. So Kindrel, we have gone through a major transformation with all of our systems, processes, and operations in the last two years, uh, including sustainability. And so for sustainability um, specifically, we have been very focused on our own environmental goals and setting those goals for ourselves, which were very open and transparent um, and with. And uh, our commitment is really a fundamental part of not just how we're strengthening and changing our business operations, but again, because customer zero, share those insights with our clients. Right. Show our, incli our clients in the market how and why we have committed to achieve net zero by 2040, right? And and share, I think this is really important also, Shelley, is to be able to share the education opportunities that we have created as a company to empower our own employees to drive sustainable outcomes. Mm -hmm. Driving sustainability in an organization is not at the executive level only place, right? It, it involves all of us. If I'm a, to your compost experience, you know, example, yeah. if I'm a household of six and only one of the six are composting, I it's really a problem. Thinking? It's a problem, right? <laughs> and so we really, um, I, I credit, all credit due to, to our ESG team for really creating educational programs to empower all of us as business leaders and our employees to just make better informed sustainability dec decisions, really, so that we do reach those goals. And again, customer zero, right? We have these yeah. insights and the experience to share that and advise advise with our existing clients and new clients on on what that process has has looked like experience where the bumps have been in the road um but that that to your point through our ecosystem also we don't do this alone right um and so we have a broad um uh, um ecosystem of partners ourselves that have helped us through this journey those same partners are advising and helping us with their own clients. And then that's what we bring, bring to the table. I think that transparency is so important. And to be able to share that, you know, even something as simple as we started down this path, we thought this was going to happen, but instead this happened. So we had to pivot, you know, yes. those are the, those are the, but those are the kind that happens to all of us. It's right. And so when you can be transparent about that and when your customers can take advantage of the things that you've learned along the way, I think that's truly important. And I also really think that, you know, I, I, I am um, in charge of ESG at my uh, corporate location, which is my home. And I'm constantly <laughs> educating my team, my family on here's what you, here's what you can compost. Here's what you don't do. Here's what you know. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, or I'm the one going out, digging out, you know, greasy pizza boxes out of the recycling bin and try, you know, but I mean, that's a, and I don't mean to be silly with these examples, but this same kind, and by the way, I have these conversations with my people here at home all the time. So if you're, you know, have a small organization of 90,000 employees like Kindrel <laughs> or whatever the size of your organization, it is ongoing conversations and education and training and information. And, and I think that that's really the path to success for sure. It is. It will take a village. Um, it it always village does. Of all of us as an industry. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. To, to make that change. But again, I think um, it's exciting for us to be able to share um, our history, our changes, our own sustainability report yeah. and goals, but the outcomes too. Right? Yeah, no. The outcomes to show that um, now, you know, we, we want to help improve the number from 16 <laughs> percent. Yeah you know, to a much higher number and influence that to, to make, to simply make the world a better place for all of us. I, I, I'm down with that goal. So as we wrap this conversation, I know that Kindrel has had a big year and we're really only a little bit into it. So where do you see Kindrel heading as we move on through 2024? And maybe what, what are you most excited about? We have had a big year. I mean, just in the last month alone, well, at Mobile World Congress, we, we announced two 
very two new um, additional announcements back to the partnership conversation, right? Um, to expand upon our ecosystem, we launched a uh, unified multi-SIM service. This was developed and launched to expand connectivity private beyond the private connectivity that we have deployed um, across several in industrial environments and mobile devices to give our clients more flexibility on the connectivity piece at, at the IoT level. So that that was um, a really exciting announcement. The other announcement that we happened to launch also Mobile World Congress was a, was a renewed global alliance and a new private network service collaboration with Hewlett uh, Hewlett Packard. So this was this was um, a really exciting announcement for us at Mobile World Congress because I think uh, last year at Mobile World Congress, many saw our announcements with Nokia and, and our private solution that we've been deploying successfully to many of our clients. But again, we know that we need to expand our ecosystem as technology and technologies with partners changes. Our clients expect that of that of us. And so we've done that research um, and chose HPE as another, as another partner, but certainly we're, you know, we're just continuing to get started um, and we're going to continue to make progress in this TMT market space. I'm really excited about the opportunities that we have um, in all three industries. Um, and I'm especially excited for me uh, leading this market, the skill that my team has to bring again that industry knowledge it does the conversations with their clients don't start with technology they start with understanding what their business challenges are and uh, i'm really proud that i've got a i've got a fantastic team having discussions about business challenges and have created and continue to develop more use cases that solve those challenges for our clients. Technology enables the use case, right? But the conversation starts at really understanding what are our clients' business challenges. And I think that's what makes us unique as a system integrator. Um, we are people first company. And as many have heard and, and heard Martin say, we are simply, we are the, the heart of progress and our people sit in the center of who we are and that uh, we've got a lot of great things coming. Start by solving problems by listening. I mean, it makes yeah. perfect sense, right? And, you know, not selling, listening. Listening. That's really, it's, listening. and you know what? It's something that not every company does. So Gretchen Tinnerman, VP and GM for Telco Media and Entertainment and Technology at Kindrel. Thank you so much for spending time with me. It is always a great conversation. I enjoy it so much. This is the second of what I know will be many, and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks, Shelly. I look forward to hearing how your composting is going and probably <laughs> for some hip tips now also myself. Thank All you. right. <laughs>